Hey everybody, it's Angeline. Today we are reading Mama, Do You Love Me? In this book, a mama reassures her little girl that she will always love her, no matter what. And this book is especially fun because the mom and her little girl are members of a group of people called the Inuit people. They live way, way at the top of the earth in an area known as the Arctic Circle, where it is cold and snowy most of the time. And this book shows us the way that the Inuit people lived many years ago. Now in this book, there are some words that you probably don't know and some other things that you probably don't know why they are important to the Inuit people. So at the end of the book, we will talk about some of those things. Enjoy. Mama, Do You Love Me? by Barbara M. Juice. Illustrated by Barbara Lavallee. Mama, do you love me? Yes, I do, dear one. How much? I love you more than the raven loves his treasure. More than the dog loves his tail. More than the whale loves his spout. How long? I'll love you until the umiak flies into the darkness, till the stars turn to fish in the sky, and the puffin howls at the moon. Mama, what if I carried our eggs, our ptarmigan eggs, and I tried to be careful, and I tried to walk slowly, but I fell, and the eggs broke? Then I would be sorry, but still, I would love you. What if I put salmon in your parka, ermine in your mittens, and lemmings in your mukluks? Then I would be angry. What if I threw water at our lamp? Then, dear one, I would be very angry but still, I would love you. What if I ran away? Then I would be worried. What if I stayed away and sang with the wolves and slept in a cave? Then, dear one, I would be very sad, but still, I would love you. What if I turned into a musk ox? Then I would be surprised. What if I turned into a walrus? Then I would be surprised and a little scared. What if I turned into a polar bear and I was the meanest bear you ever saw? and I had sharp, shiny teeth, and I chased you into your tent and you cried. Then I would be very surprised and very scared, but still, inside the bear, you would be you, and I would love you. I will love you forever and always, because you are my dear one. The end. Now, let's learn about the Inuit and their culture. Though often referred to as Eskimos, most native Arctic people call themselves Inuit, which means the people. One Inuit person is called an Inuk. There are many different Inuit nations, and each has its own language and traditions. Most Inuit live in the Arctic, the area around the North Pole. It is one of the coldest regions on Earth. During the winter, there are months when the sun doesn't shine. In summer, there are months when the sun never sets. Greenland, Northern Canada, parts of Russia, and Alaska are all part of the Arctic region. 
The Inuit in this story live in the northern part of Alaska, where they have lived for more than 9,000 years. There are no cities in this part of Alaska. In fact, there are even few roads. This book shows the way Inuit lived many years ago. Now, most Inuit live in a way that combines the old and the new. Dog. Traditionally, the Inuit depended on dog sleds to travel. Now, many Inuit use snowmobiles as well. Ermine. This is the most widely used name for the short-tailed weasel. In the winter, its fur turns white, except for a black tip on its tail. This is when it is called an ermine. Lamp. The lamp in an Inuit home was never left untended because it was such a vital part of daily survival. It was used to heat the home, melt snow for drinking water, dry clothes, and cook food. Lamps were carved out of soft stone and filled with oil from whale blubber and a wick of dried moss. Lemming. There are many of these mouse-like creatures in the Arctic. They live in tunnels beneath the earth and snow, where it is much warmer than above ground. In the winter, their coats turn from brown to white. They are the only rodent whose fur changes color. Masks. Inuit believe that the medicine man could talk to the spirits. To do that, he would wear a different mask for different ceremonies. Inuit artists still make masks today, but they are usually for decoration, not for ceremonial use. Mitten. If an Inuk needs to rest and he does not have shelter, he takes off his mittens and sits on them. Mukluk. These Inuit boots are made with fur. Traditionally, they were lined with moss, but today they are lined with felt. Musk ox. Musk oxen are prehistoric animals dating from the last ice age. Like cattle, they graze in small herds. In the spring, they shed their winter underfur, which is then gathered to make sweaters and other clothes. Parka. This familiar hooded jacket was first worn in the Arctic. A woman's parka has extra room in the back for her baby. Polar bear. These are the largest of all bears. They live on huge islands of ice in the far north where they blend in with the white landscape. Nanook is its Inuit name. The polar bear is the most dangerous animal in the Arctic. Ptarmigan. These birds are found all across Alaska. They are snow white in the winter and they have feathered feet to protect them from the cold. They lay one egg every seven days, and these eggs are a treasured food of the Inuit. There are three varieties of ptarmigan, the willow ptarmigan, the rock ptarmigan, and the white-tailed ptarmigan. The willow ptarmigan is the state bird of Alaska. Puffin. These colorful birds are found on the west coast of Alaska, on the east coast of Canada, and in Greenland. They live on the sea and on cliffs that rise from the sea. They are not very good flyers. Their landings are so bumpy, they can only land on water or soft grass. But they can fly very well underwater, where they use their wings as paddles. In the winter, their beaks change from bright orange to a duller grayish orange. Ravens, known in many places as crows, Inuit call these familiar birds ravens. Found in folktales throughout the world, ravens play a particularly important part in Inuit culture because Inuit believe that after death, people return as ravens. It is considered bad luck to kill a raven. Ravens are the most common year-round birds found in the Arctic. Salmon. A variety of salmon can be found in Alaska's streams and rivers. Inuit catch salmon in the summer, then they're smoked, 
dried or frozen in the permafrost, the ground just beneath the surface, which stays frozen year round, and saved for winter. Umiak. These boats are made of whalebone covered with animal skins. They're used for traveling and to hunt whale. A smaller, more commonly known version of this boat is a kayak. Walrus. These mammals live on pack ice, ice that's several feet thick and covers many miles, that floats in the Arctic Ocean. They have whiskers that they use to skim the ocean floor in search of food. They use their tusks to maneuver their young, to break ice, and to fight. Their family name, Odebenidae, means those who walk with their teeth. Inuit use walrus hide to make fishing lines and boats. The meat is used as food. Whale. Whales are mammals, not fish. Their blubber can be used as both food and fuel. The Inuit hunt whale in the summer, when the ice has broken up enough to move their umiaks through the water. Some whales common to the Arctic region are belugas, blue whales, and killer whales. The whale in this book is a bowhead. Wolf. Wolves hunt together in packs, obeying a leader. They form close families and are gentle, playful parents to their young. I hope you enjoyed learning about the Inuit. See you next time.